the hill at the Gome, and we are happy to have you in our virtual audience this morning. Let's stand as we give God praise this morning as we invite Brother Richard Bailey to do the opening prayer. Church, blessed morning to each and everyone. It's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord once more. So let us pray. Oh, Father and God, as we come before you this morning, oh God, Father and God, I lift up each and everyone who are here before you this morning. Father and God, I bring up my bishop and his wife before you this morning, oh God, our assistant pastor and wife this morning, oh God. Our head deacon and wife this morning, oh God, and other deacon and everyone who have part in this church this morning, oh God. I lift them up before you this morning, oh God. So Father and God, this morning I ask you, oh God, for your guidance and your protection over each and every one of us this morning, oh God. So Father and God, I lift up our country before you, oh God, St. Vincent and the Grenadines before you, oh God. Father, from the Governor General to the Prime Minister to the gov to the opposition leader right down, oh God. Father, yourself, I am our parents, mother, father, brother, sister this morning, our children, oh God. I lift them up before you, oh God. Father, in a time right now, oh God, we, they need our prayer, oh God. So Father and God, I pray that we may lift them up in our prayer, oh God. Father, there is a generation out there who don't have no respect for God, oh God, dear God. You, oh, but they must realize, oh God, that there is a judgment coming, oh God. And where will they spend eternity, oh God? So, Father and God, as I lift up this service once more, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you may bless the worship team this morning, oh God, as we sing, oh God. That our voice will be glorified this morning, oh God. As our praises will go up to you, oh God, and your bless our blessing will come down, oh God. Father and God, bless the musician this morning, oh God. Father, most of all, God, this morning, the one who will break the bread of life this morning before us this morning. Bless him, oh God. I pray, oh God, that some souls this morning will be blessed this morning. Someone who do not know you as Lord and Savior this morning, whether in our church or listening by the internet or wherever, God. I pray, oh God, that they may come to know you, oh God, before it's too late this morning. So, Father and God, just have your with you find me right now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please greet someone next to you before you have your seats. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome you to the, into the sanctuary this morning. We are from the Glad Tidings Tabernacle Church, and we are a glad people, and we just want to give God the glory. I want to, you to stand if you are visiting with us for the very first time. If you are visiting for the very first time, can you stand? Tell us your name and where you are from. Okay, so no one is visiting for the first time. So we go down to our birthday celebration. Is there anybody celebrating a birthday from today right until Saturday? Okay. Happy birthday, um, Brother t Let's, And we hope that you will enjoy it today. Oh, Sister Kane is celebrating. So if you are looking at us, Sister Kane, happy birthday to you as well. Oh, and she's 89? She's 79. Okay, and she's counting on slowly getting towards the 80 mark. Okay, so is there anyone who's celebrating an anniversary from today until Saturday? Okay, so there is no anniversary, but we are all celebrating life. So we can give God praise for the breath that we breathe. Indeed, God is good and he is faithful. Hallelujah. Let's stand as we give God praise this morning for his goodness. Hallelujah.
untouchable. One generation shall praise your name to another and shall declare your mighty acts of God. Great are you. You are. 
Aleluia. 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 We worship you, God. You are indeed your way. Aleluia. Aleluia. Chosen to call me. 
As we prepare ourselves for to give to God this morning and just to make a, a little reflection on how God is such a good God for the universe is built on the spirit of generosity a God who is outrageously generous who showers upon us every day. In fact, the word says he gave the rain to the good and the not good. You know, we were having a dry spell for the year. And last week, the rain came. The rain came. And you know what? I saw the rain falling on some pretty bad people's land. If God was like one of us, he would say, you won't get no rain. But God is a generous God. And that's the basis of our giving to God. A God who is outrageous in his benevolence. And we pray at this time for you as you give. Father, you said it is more blessed to give than to receive. So God, we speak blessings over every hand, every heart that will purpose to give to you today. God, we pronounce those hands blessed. For it was you who said, whatsoever you doeth will prosper. And God, we declare over your people now that they will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That the drought, the financial drought, the economic downturn will not be able to wither our leaves for our roots have gone deep in you. Thank you. I pray for the manifestation of that blessing now upon your uh, your children, their children, and their children's children. God, uh, we ask, so oh God, uh, that our children will be fruitful, will be productive, will be prosperous. Bless every business that will release their seed today. We ask, so oh God, for miracles. So God, you will change policies and laws to accommodate the prosperity of your people. Thank you now, God. We receive your blessings upon us. For your blessings make rich without toilsome labor. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let's give. You may go forward in your giving. I'm going to dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a
you. So we'll do the intercessory prayer for soul winning at Diamond Crusade. Good morning. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise and the glory because we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, the one who saved us. We thank God for his precious word because his word declares at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Lord, today, Lord God, we come another time in your presence, God. Lord, we know you are great. You make us conquerors, God. And Lord, as we go this afternoon, God, to conduct the crusade, God, Lord, even to meet those in the highways and the byways and encourage them to come in so they can partake and become conquerors, God. Lord God, we pray for your grace. Lord, we pray for your strength. Lord God, we pray that even as we will speak, God, as your word will go forth, whatever form it will go forth, we thank you because your word, it is powerful. Your word give life. Lord, your word give redemption. We thank you for your precious blood that you shed so that man can be saved. Jesus, we adore you. And Lord, we bring lost souls before you, God. Because you said, go in the world and preach the gospel. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. And God, we pray for the crusade, God, as your word will go forth. We come against destruction. God, we pray that hearts, God, will be in tune. God, those who are fed up with their way of life, God, they will realize you have the way. You have the key of death, hell, and the grave. And God, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. And Lord, you are not willing that any should perish. That's why you lay down your life. And so God, to day we come on behalf of our loved ones god those who are pondering lord those who want to fix themselves first god we pray that they will let go they will realize god all you require is to confess you to accept you as lord and they can be saved god and so today god we pray that lord your word your word will meet them with a the heart god you will melt out stony heart and give heart of flesh flesh my god as they encounter your love because lord your love is real your love is great lord your love reach and your love heal lord you heal the wounded one lord you heal the abuse god you show us a way the only way you are and Lord, we thank you for those that you're going to save. We thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your will being done. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Thank you. Okay, you may have your seats. And I just want to welcome Bishop Porter, who is here from Florida, Nice Avenue in St. Vincent, and to Glad Tidings Tabernacle, and our very own... Pastor Michael Ori Craig and his beautiful wife and his in-laws. We just want to welcome you to Glad Tidings Tabernacle and hope that you had an enjoyable time in St. Vincent. I'm going to call on Brother Fenton Hart John, who will do our special this morning. God. Thank God for his grace. Grace that redeems us. That More than my mouth can testify. More than my mind can comprehend. And I've seen the wonders of your grace and i am so sure this is not the end oh, oh, oh. And I know it's your grace on my days. I will sing your praise more than, more than my mouth can testify. 
fight More than my mind can comprehend And I've seen the wonders of your grace And I am so sure this is not
Church. The scripture reading today would be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 to 21. I will be reading from the NIV. Here begin it. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them and he has committed us to the mess and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here ends the scripture reading. Thank you, Sister Lauricia. Yeah? I'm going to invite Bishop Williams who will do the introduction to the speaker. Oh, those who are the children, you can leave now for Children's Church. All right, so give the children a hand as they, they would leave us. For a bit. Good. I think you could give them some more. Give them. They are our jewels. Okay, I. 
I want to express our condolences. I want to do so personally and on behalf of all of us to Sister, Sister Nash. Where are you? Yes, so Sister Nash, she, her husband passed away suddenly, quite suddenly, um, last week. And um, we share your loss, we share your pain. We know how difficult it is to lose a loved one. We are with you in our prayer. And God has promised that he will comfort us in our sorrow. So we are here for you. God bless you. And also we want to welcome this morning um, the team from Jamaica. They, um, they, they told me that, you know, they are... They're a regular part of our virtual audience. And you never know when you get behind a camera or in front of a camera who you're actually speaking to. I usually, I think I'm unaware now of the camera and that's the best place to be. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty natural. Then you don't have to worry about did I cross my T there? Or did I say anything wrong there? Amen. So we, we want to welcome, first of all, we want to welcome brother and sister Ro to St. Vincent. <laughs> and these are the parents of this lovely young lady here, Dr. Moya. And she is married to this, my son. I'm not too sure who is more handsome than who, you know. So we, we welcome you. I know, um, I know Pastor, um, we, we really share your pain yesterday. Um, and I even have to slow down how I talk about that. Because human pain um, could be a tricky thing and how it impacts you. But we are with you in, your pr in our prayer. Uh, you know, the word says that when one of us hurt, all of us hurt. We, are that, we have that connection. But God is going to heal. One day, one day, we all will have the answers that we continue to ask. So be strong and be focused on God. And as I said yesterday, the kingdom is on target. Kingdom is on track. Never change. Nothing could change that. So God bless you. I won't even ask you to say nothing. I would ask your wife and your parents to come greet us. They would do so on your behalf. So, which one of you will, or the mommy? <laughs> so welcome, this is Jamaica. <laughs> uh, we love to have Jamaicans here. Right? That's your flag, so you know we are we're big on Jamaica. Thank you. Seems as if I have no choice. <laughs> they just nominated me to come to speak to you. What a blessing it is, though, to be in St. Vincent. What a blessing it is to be with the people of God. You know, we are from different locations geographically. 
But in God's sight, we are just one big happy family. Your island is beautiful. Your island is wonderful. And I'm happy, you know, it's a sad situation that has brought us here. But in God's agenda, it's perfect. You know, I used to look at the little part in the memoriam in the papers which said, we may not, Lord, your purpose see, but all is well that's done by thee. And right now, that's all I can say. I don't know God's purpose. I didn't know I would be here today, March, how much? How much is it? What day? The 10th of March, sitting in Glad Tidings Tabernacle, in the physical. I watch you online, and I see all the worship leaders and the lovely songs that you sing, and I learn some of them because I like worship too, you know? But look at it, March 10, 2024, I am here in person. To God be the glory. And the only other thing I can say is, let's make it a date for the pearly gates. Amen? I want to see all of you. I may have made up my mind. I have nowhere else going. I'm headed, headed for heaven. How about you? God bless you. Good. I love that date for the pearly gate. So we, we want to welcome, I'm terrible at names, Kadero, yes, actually he's, um, um, he told me that he's a member of the Leo Miracle Church, no, so. <laughs> and you know, it's strange things do happen. Strange in our in our regard, but in God's sight, everything is but a plan. And I had the opportunity to for two years to have lived in the same little dorm, five of us five beds with one little lane. The little lane between the, the three bunk and the two bunk and a little study area that we lived in, we starved in, we dreamed in, we planned in, and we were friends in. Because you see, the friends that you make out of necessity, out of adversity or poverty or whatever you have, those friendships last. So we didn't see each other in person for 41 years the last time I saw this gentleman was really at our wedding. That's almost 42 years ago. Giving a toast. And all the guys who were giving toasts at our wedding were saying, how come this guy come here from a little island and take away our best girl? And I want to tell you, it isn't obvious. <laughs> we can talk about it because he knows. <laughs> so, it, you know, it is, it was with great honor that I shared the last couple of days with him as we catch up for those 41 years. And we share stories. But you know, as he shared his stories, I am trying to, to 
to see how much he's still the original that I met. Because the original little fella that I met 43 or 44 years ago was a gentleman who had such a passion for souls and for evangelism. And as I shared with him over these, these couple of days, I realized that the passion has only matured. But his heart is still in the, in the things that he was passionate about four decades away. He's married. And he's married to my wife's good friend. In fact, the first time he saw his, that wife is when my wife brought her to her house for a vacation. That's a, that's a long story, yeah? I could give you some story about that visit. But it's in your business. <laughs> And together, they, they, they said that they have, is it eight children? Eight children. So before you, oh, but I, I want to explain the eight children. <laughs> eight children. There are eight children. And part of it is, you know, his, his heart and his ministry, you know, to work with people and to see transformation take place in their lives. So I want you to stand with me and uh, to welcome my friend of four decades. <clears throat> Dr. Clive Porter. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Bishop. Good morning. What a joy to be with you today. What a joy to be here at Glad Tidings in St. Vincent. My heavens, I'm in St. Vincent. And um, I want to say, yeah, we have eight children. Um, I heard the moan and the groan, and I heard you thinking that I'm a cruel man to my wife, and all these things coming through your head. five are adopted so if that makes me closer to salvation I thank you for your understanding but the, the, the 42 years that we have been apart we have I realized that we have always been in each other's thoughts and in case a, a wonderful lady came up yesterday and uh, uh, rebuked us in a precious heart and she said uh it is not good for you to have a friend you have not seen in 42 years. You've got to fix it. And I, I, I received it with grace. Praise the Lord. And I thought I had to make a comeback that in our time, we did not have cell phones. We did not have email. And we did not have the things you have today. So we are back together. And um, I was sharing to one precious lady in the office this morning. I'm originally Jamaican. I'm now American. I live in America. And I, I get to go to Africa and Europe more than I do Jamaica because I have no other siblings or anything living there. I go to my own country as a, as a tourist. So if I want to do tourism travel, I'm heading to St. Vincent. So my wife is waiting for me to come home for us to pack bags and head down here. As a matter of fact, the same amount of time that we were apart, my wife and your pastor's wife have been friends and close friends and singing partners, and they have not seen each other for the same time, but nobody accused them. They just accused us. And that's... So my wife is waiting for them to come up to start their excitement. 
I'm just glad to be here today to be a part of this. Uh, of course, came down to be with brother, brother, brother Michael, and he is the son of your pastor. And I want to stand on his value and say he has never met his his mother. So just in case, we clarified that yesterday. But now he has passed him on to me uh, to hopefully mentor and develop and I have received the assignment with grace. And uh, I'm glad to come down to stand with you and I received that assignment to see you through this journey and to see you come to whatever gift God has placed in you for it to mature. I commit that to you. I commit that to you on behalf of the Lord's gifting to me and you know that most of it is because of your wife. Had it not been for her, I would have dropped you someplace. Well, what a great girl you got to marry. And great in-laws and parents. So good to travel with them. Uh, back in, and this is going to surprise your pastor. Back in uh, 1875. Sister Maureen, back in 1875. Uh, Francis Crosby wrote an ancient song which became a tremendous blessing to the church of encouragement to believers, those who are going through and those who are a tremendous song. It goes like this. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies? Whom through life has been my guide, heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. Yes, I know. Whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter And my soul a thirst may be Gushing from the rock before me Lo, a spring of joy I see Gushing from the rock before me Lo, a spring of joy I see Michael, all the way my Savior leads me. Oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight. To realms of day, this my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. I wish that Sister Maroon would check her husband's heart. He's shocked. Didn't think I could see. I know he's going to a phase right now. I want to talk to you today for a little bit about the battle of sanctity. Battle for sanctity. And I, I want to tell you, I, I am in the doctrine and gospel of Elizabeth Taylor. Which means I will say to you what, I, what she said to each of her husbands. I will not keep you long.
The scripture was read for you this morning by our precious young lady. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21, it says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath commi committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Lord add his blessing to his word. I want to assure you that I am confident that we will work together on this because you have had the privilege over 25 years to have one of the greatest gifts to the ministry as your pastor. One of the greatest gifts. And, and I'm not just, this is not hyperbole. I have known him for 40 odd years and uh, he has not grown any taller. Um, he has grown into a depth of maturity par none but his heart is still the same so sincere so committed so convicted to the things of God if you have not benefited from this over 25 years may I submit to you that you're hopeless I, I really mean that I really mean that if you have not benefited from the sincerity, the heart, the depth, the commitment of this man and his wife over 25 years, all right, I am so thrilled and honored to be sharing your pulpit, my friend, and I trust today that our word will be a blessing to you. I want to talk to you about the battle for sanctity. The word sanctity is a frequently used term in reference to holiness and holy living or holy living. The term actually means holiness of life and character. That's what it actually means. Holiness of life and character. And the apostle in his writing uses the word, use the word reconcile or reconciliation in presenting the reality of man's ongoing battle to rid himself of sin. When I say man's ongoing battle to rid himself of sin, it is implied to you that no matter how sanctified you think you are, you have never lived a perfect day. Which means that the Christian life as well as the life of the unredeemed is a constant battle. To stay on course, to stay on target, not to be knocked over by the things we face or the things we go through. It's a constant battle. And so the apostle presented his case about uh, us fighting to rid ourselves of sin and to return to God. And God's unending grace to support us in the return. There is a battle to return. But there's also that challenge we have. That no matter how we have the desire to return, it is not possible for us to return on our own. Which signifies that even though we attend church to worship, God is existing, God is here, God is in spirit, but we cannot worship God effectively unless he helps us to worship him. This is how excellent this God is. He makes us to worship him and you cannot worship him effectively except he helps you to worship him. And, and the, the exciting thing about it is he, he will do all that and it does not affect his ego for he has none. <laughs> I am going to... The apostle makes an interesting point. He said that all things are of God or that all things belong to God by virtue of the fact that he is the creator of all things. If we can, if we can grasp these concepts of writings our appreciation for God would be at a level even us find it hard to, comp to comprehend but then he said that it is God who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ 
that all things were made by God, but it is God who hath reconciled us. Now, the word reconciled simply means to restore to friendship. That's what it means. It means to restore. It is God who has looked at our enmity, looked at our vile behaviors, looked at our disobedience approach to him and reconciled us unto him or make us friends again with him. Now, 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 you... We have a tendency, if people have wronged us, we don't talk to them again. I don't know if you, I don't. We have that tendency, that very immature tendency of saying that somebody has wronged us. And Bishop, there's a, there's a, there is almost a funny way of looking at that. Because in, in a setting like that, you find that you are angry at a person who has wronged you. And your own warped mentality of perfection tells you that you should not speak to this person again. What does not make sense is how the, Im the imperfect can be angry with the imperfect. Leave that for another time when I get back. The inference here is that man who by virtue of sin removed himself from God or from fellowship with God cannot himself Rejoin or return himself to God to fellowship or friendship. Except God helps him to do that. And so what, what, it, what, I'm not, what time are you going to? And so one of the things we understand, my dear friends, that there is no such thing as a superior walk of Christianity. We might develop doctrinal points to say, if you don't worship in my church, I am better than you. You are merely expressing your own level of ignorance there is no superior walk to christianity every man who comes through christ has the same need of christ to maintain christianity or to live so close to him that he will make heaven um sister rose said that your island is beautiful it is but boy, it's not heaven, is it? Uh, we've got to get out of here and go to heaven someday, right? To say that we are reconciled to God by himself is to say uh, by, by or through Jesus Christ we are made friends or brought back into fellowship with him. By our, and, and the thing to it is that I like to put it this way, that God seeing all of this in man and seeing our impotence to return became spirit, impregnated Mary, that might, he might give birth to himself, that he might permit himself to die so that we might be saved and then bring himself back to heaven that he might wait on us to come by his grace. Paul says great is a mystery. <laughs> Woo. He references our return through reconciliation as a ministry. Speaking of it being a doctrine or principle by which we must now live. That if he helps us to come back to him, it is not something we should boast about. It is something we should strive to live by. That whatever walk we have in Christ has nothing to do with your denomination, has nothing to do with your church name, has nothing to do with how long you serve the church. It has to be with the fact that God condescended, that he came into his own and brought us back to him, giving us a chance to be in friendship with him again, making us qualified for heaven. If God gets involved in this heaven plan, then I submit to you that heaven is not a myth. We have got to really understand ourselves so that we can add purpose to worship. This, this church tradition is not helping. This, this being committed to a Sunday morning church is not helping. There's got to be a purpose to it. There's got to be an appreciation to it that God did this for me. And whether it is Sunday, Monday, Friday, or Saturday, I am going to make sure I show my appreciation to God for God did this. Um, he 
he is here implying that the primary objective of the gospel is to bring man to a place of complete change of mind and attitude towards God, self and fellow man. I am fraternally Pentecostal. I know you are too. I am Pentecostal. My disappointment in Pentecostalism is the, is the frivolity with which we embrace this precious gift. Where we make it more ecstasy than a responsibility. Oh God, if this was it. <laughs> we, we make this thing more ecstasy. We are full of excitement but no maturity. I have a tendency to think and I, I, a frightened tendency that God cannot take the church to heaven the way it is. We're going to have to do better than this because if mature, immature people go to heaven, we will mash up and we will break up and we will disrupt heaven. Let me try to. <laughs> Here's what I want you to understand, man, uh, folks, is that God made sacrifices for people who did not deserve it. So that we might have, it doesn't matter where you're from. Your island is small. Your ocean is beautiful. I'm from a larger island and live in a, a major country. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We are, we, we are going to have to die and we're going to have to go someplace after death. And that begins with what we call what? Reconciliation. If we come into reconciliation with Christ, then God has assured us a home in heaven. I got to run. Now, this, he says, is made possible when a man's heart is made free from the enmity and strife produced by the callousness of sin and is replaced by a salvation so precious and free, erasing the enmity of the heart, which stands as a hindrance to deliverance. That word deliverance, that word deliverance does not require a prophet from ancient places to come to speak over you so you can be delivered. It's right there. It's right there. Deliverance is found in reconciliation. Any man who comes to Christ in friendship, friendship is this man and I are friends and I, I am in his, I won't tell them, I'm in his house and make him feel good. I get him addicted to stuff that are heavenly. But because we are friends, we share under that. I'm happy to see him. He's happy to see me. He's happy that I'm in his house and I can't wait to have him in mine. That's what friends do. If you're a friend of, oh Lord God, if you're a friend of Christ through reconciliation, God cannot wait to have you in his house. That's what heaven is about, my friends. Heaven is about a God who is waiting to welcome his friends into his house and then make it his own. Since I got to my friend, they show me my room, but they have never had to show me again. I know where to find my way. When you get to heaven, that's what God wants. You have such friendship with him that there is no strangers there. This is what he says, the same Paul. This is what St. Paul says in Romans 5, 1 to 10. This is what he says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, giving the right to say that I am a child of God, I have peace with God. Therefore, given the right to claim and, and proclaim that I'm a friend of God, I am no longer at enmity with God. Uh, uh, we are struggling with a war in Europe between Russia and Ukraine. And it's so sad to see neighbors killing each other. And all of a sudden, because of one rogue leader, everybody are enemies. Now, all of a sudden, because of one rogue devil, we have become enemies of God. But God for centuries has been extending an olive branch. And here is a problem we have. Many of us have accepted the olive branch on the basis of religiosity only. Not on the basis of Christian commitment, on the basis of religiosity. Because we are still easily offended by truth of gospel. 
by rebuke, by assignment. I say to them, Bishop at church, I say, listen to me, don't you get excited when I teach you about the construction of the sermon. Get excited about the rebuke you find in the sermon. Because the only thing that can help you in my sermon is the rebuke which comes from the word. If you get offended by the rebuke, you're at enmity with the God of the message. I'd like to finish this. But he says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Back where I'm from, we do talk to each other. So say God. You say God. No, you say God. Good. Back there we say, neighbor, tell your neighbor. And we don't live anywhere near each other. So I could say to you, neighbor, turn to the neighbor behind you and say, I would rather not have anybody else sitting behind me but you. When you look, it's, in, it's the neighbor who killed your dog. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Where we stand. This existing grace. This permanent grace. You remember I said earlier in the discourse that you will never live a perfect day in your life. Remember I said that earlier in the discourse? And it sounds frightening, but you can't. You don't have the ability to live a perfect day. Here's the thing. You cannot frustrate yourself to live perfect because that is not God's expectation of you. God's expectation of you is for you to give your best effort to him in sincere worship, committed worship, and where your best effort failed, grace compensates to help you. But if you, if you, if you don't give your best effort, not even grace can help you. You, you cannot trick God. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, boy. You cannot trick God to go to heaven. I want to get to this. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations. I love that. Oh, the man said, the apostle, the apostle says that we glory in tribulation. I'm, talk, I'm looking at you. He said we glory in tribulation. said the trials which come to us is meant as a gift. We glory. It, it's meant to extract from us that which would not come out ex except for that. God, I want to tell The man said when God would have tried you, skip and jump and glorify him that he trusts you to make to, to, to try you and believe that you will not embarrass him. When God, glory in tribulation. He said not only so, but we glory. We celebrate trials. Only mad people do that unless you're in God. We celebrate trials because it tells us that we are in a relationship with God where God can trust us. Every day we wake up saying we want to trust God. The question is, in this relationship, can God trust us? Glory in tribulation. I got to finish this. <laughs> Knowing that tribulation work at patience. <laughs> the apostle says, look, if you don't go through trials, you will never be able to detect Patience. <laughs> I got a run boy. And patience, experience. If you have not gone through anything, you cannot develop into any experience. And you cannot help anybody to get beyond you because you cannot lead anybody further than you have gone. And you cannot bring anybody into what you have not done. sat the other day and I told you the story that this young lady came to church the other day I, I dedicated her baby in December and in February the baby died she was about to lose her mind and I sat looking at her as if she probably think I was just cold I was not cold I was waiting for her to stop crying to tell her it's going to be okay and for her to ask me how I, know, how I know that, for me to tell her that my first child died. I sat at his bedside for 18 days begging him to live and he would not. And I served the same God, oh Lord God, man, who should protect me from my pain. But he tried me and I loved him still. Lord God, I'm going to preach and get out of here. He tried me and I loved him. And I was able to tell her, 
look at my life now. Eight children, ten grandchildren, and I'm doing well. If I had backslidden on him, I would have had nothing. Her sister just lost her husband. You said, Bishop, I want you to know that God is not vindictive. You, have not, you, have, you can do nothing to God for him to be vindictive towards you. Nothing. If God tries you, man, it's because he, he wants to see if he can trust you. And build you up into experience that when others who are broken come to you, you can bring them back. And experience brings hope, you know. <laughs> and the man said, hope make it not a shame. Meaning, it is not shameful to hope for what you cannot see. Don't be embarrassed to hope for heaven you cannot see. Just believe. I wish I had a, a time to enjoy myself. Do not be ashamed to look to the sky. Hoping for heaven you can't see. Because the experience tells you from all you have read and seen that heaven is there. I'd like to think that you think that your pastor and wife, they're brilliant people. Brilliant people. And I've said it many times, I, I am way too intelligent, experienced, and exposed to get to 47 years of Christianity doubting if the God I serve existed. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Now, for when we were yet without strength, when we were powerless to redeem ourselves in due time Christ died for us for, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die for a righteous man will one die meaning uh, 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 you love your pastor and I hope you do but I'm not sure you're going to jump before a shooting bullet to take it you probably try to push him away but to say to the man shoot me and leave him I don't know about that level of Christianity you have <laughs> see what I'm saying But this guy looked at us who would not even want a relationship with him and then die for us. That's what the apostle is saying. <laughs> Yet peradventure for a good man would some even dare to die. But God commendeth or demonstrates or proved his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners. That is the key. For, for, for we are dealing with the righteousness of God. So we are dealing with the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God hates sin. I want you to grasp that. The righteousness of God does what? Hates sin. And the righteousness of God permits the righteous God to look at me in sin and die for me in what he hates. And if this is not God, you tell me. Um, for if when we were sin, yet when our enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. This is a doctrine, says the apostle, which gives birth to our hope. This is the doctrine which gives birth to our hope. That God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. That Christ was not just a mere man, but God manifesting himself in flesh through Christ, not imputing our transgressions upon us, Meaning, not leaving us helpless. Helpless, they're saddled by our sins. But imputing or taking responsibility for sins, he did not commit to himself. So how did we get here? We got here not because Jesus sinned. We got here because we were sinners. And we got here because God saw our helplessness that he could not saddle us with the responsibility of our own sins to get out of it. Because we would not know how to get out. So what did he do? He took upon himself sins he did not commit. And made himself sin for us. So now, 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 now. This whole crucifixion is about sin. Right? So Jesus could only have died for sin. But sins he did not commit. He died for sins we committed. But could not help ourselves out of it. Ah, somebody say thank you. Somebody, somebody say that. Somebody say that. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That's, that, that's how it works. He died 
for sins he did not commit, but he saw some struggling folk. You know, uh, uh, Caribbean ladies don't like lizards. Well, uh, Jamaican ladies. Moya, I was hoping to get you one for pet for Christmas. We do. In America, we keep them as pets, you know. You know. <laughs> but one thing I know, well, uh, 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 Caribbean dogs don't live in houses. Can I say that? They don't come inside. But I will tell you this much. You are more likely to be arrested in my country for hurting a dog than hurting a man. My sons brought a dog home tearing up my house and I want to throw the dog someplace and I can't because he could call the police and he has the house and I'm going to another house. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that there are times when there are things you don't even like but because it looks like it's suffering your heart will not allow you to leave it. A dog, a cat, a horse, something struggling in a quagmire can't get out. Your heart will not give you to walk away and leave it to die, even though you will not take it home. But you want to give it a chance to live. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Now, it's the same thing with God. He hates sin, but will not leave you dying in it. He will not take the sin to heaven, but he's going to take you out of it and hope that you live free from it so he can take you to heaven and enjoy it. I don't have anybody to talk to, boy. Understand this, God. <laughs> You see, my friends, man is made free from his sins not because he has the ability to shed them, but because Christ took them. Man is made free from sin not because he has the ability to shed them, but because Christ took them. The question is if Christ has taken your sins, what are you doing with them still? Why have some of your behaviors not changed? Why have some of your attitudes and characteristic traits have not changed? a little more to tell you God, Lord, I want you to know. sometimes clocks are not saved and we put them in churches um, oh yes sir yes sir the sin bearer took our sins and leaves us reconciled unto himself or brought us back into fellowship with him these are the words of the apostle hear what he says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting. He continued by saying, for God sent not his son into the world. He could have written, for God brought not himself into the world. But we understand the theology of it. For God sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus renewed our credit with God. Renewed our credit. I don't know what you, what your credit system here. Credit system. Credit. In, in America, if you don't have credit, you might as well call your undertaker, you know. You are, you are living but dead. When your credit has been renewed, everybody's calling you. They want you to do business with them. You don't know where they get their number from, but they're calling you, trying to get you to do it because your credit is shows that you can pay your bill. God has renewed. <laughs> uh, Jesus renewed our credit with God and reconciled us unto himself so that we might receive the righteousness of God and be brought again into the family of the saints. So then, do not take either the word of the Lord or the messenger of the message, messenger of the cross lightly. Do not take the word of the Lord or the messenger of the cross lightly. For we are ambassadors of Christ, said the Bible. <laughs> oh God, boy, Paul was having a field day. We are ambassadors for Christ. Now an ambassador is a diplomatic agent of the highest rank accredited to a foreign government or sovereign as a resident assignment. Uh-huh. Which means the ambassador speaks for the country. The ambassador speaks for the country. And I know you don't think yourself to be much. <laughs> you might not think yourself to be famous or popular. 
But if you're a Christian any at all, can I tell you, you speak for heaven. Not the United States or St. Vincent. You speak for heaven. You represent heaven. Let that sink in in you. Here's what the ambassador cannot do. He cannot say anything that the president will not approve. Or he's called home. He cannot stand on his own doctrine or he's called home. Oh, my dear friend, strive not to say anything God will not approve. Strive not to behave in any way God will not approve for you are an ambassador for heaven. You represent the very credibility, integrity, and character of God. Hear me. You might be poor, but you represent royalty. Bishop, I gotta run out of here. I gotta run out of here. I gotta run out of here. It is as though Jesus came from heaven and established his own embassy and left the messengers of the gospel as his duly assigned representatives. Came down and take broken down people, drunkards and murderers and whoremongers and homosexuals and everything, and save them and say, Now you are my representative. Now you speak for me. And I, I will tell you this, I will give you what to say. Not only will I give you a scripture, but I will also send the Holy Spirit who will speak for me in you and allow you to speak on my behalf. This is a great setup for common local people to be involved with. Oh Lord God, but great setup for, oh Lord Jesus Christ. Great setup for common local broke people to be involved in that God work out a plan for him to speak on heaven's behalf and every man has to listen and demons have to tremble. Great. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brethren, take heed to the things I say, says the apostle. Take heed to the things I say. For I speak with the authority of God, having the right to warn you of his pending wrath an enduring love. Having the right to warn you. <laughs> uh -huh. Bishop, there still needs to be a remnant of preachers. And that's where we come in. The, 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 the challenge of the church is in the future. For we are coming out of the scene and the ambassadors are looking weak. And they are hard to find and they, are not, they, are not, they don't want to be developed. The, oh, is the, is the church is Christ but I worry for the church <laughs> my daughter and I were in South Africa and if I told you the story and we we're at the hotel we stayed and she was telling him that tell a friend she met at the hotel she's one of the, she's one of the helps there that that my dad wants to plant a church in Johannesburg. And he said to her, him, are you, are you going to church? He said, I, I, don't, I don't do church. So what? He said, if your father plants a church here, I will go. Because he looks like he's a sincere man. He looks like his heart is in the right place. But down here, he leaned over to her. He said, do you know what all the young boys here want to be? She said, no. So they all want to become prophets because the prophecy, prophetic ministry looks so lucrative. That is what, it, oh, when we are gone, sir, this is what we are leaving behind. And we are laboring to make sure that we protect the integrity of this. It's a fight. May God give us long life and full passion to fight. But before we leave, we leave it in good hands. Lord God, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. We have I say to these young men, I know more you will help him. Put me down and suck everything out of me. And strive to become better than me. Because if you don't become better than me, you will grieve me in my grave. Because the generation you're going to inherit is nothing compared to the one I was in.
did I tell you that clocks are not Christians? Anyway, whatever I say to you, it is the word of the Lord, for I am a sign, a sign ambassador uh, with the right of divine representation. The apostle says, treat what I say unto you as though you are entreated by God himself. This is, this is serious. Do not just watch my microphone and think I'm getting a privilege. Of, this, is a, this is a duty. Preaching is not a privilege. It's a duty. It's not, it's not a place to develop popularity or fanfare. It's to fulfill duty. And he said, hear what I say to you and treat it as you're hearing from God. We pray you in Christ's stead, or I beg and beseech you on behalf of Christ. Return to God. <laughs> Do not become so familiar with the servant of the Lord. Do not become so familiar with his voice. Do not become so familiar with his care. And do not become so familiar with his longevity of service that you take for granted his heralding word of reminder. Do not take the servant for granted until you resent his rebuke. That you think he should become your friend and tailor his message to protect you. Bishop, I'm not good for the church. I'm really sorry I came, but since I'm here, let me finish it. The good man said, do not become so familiar with the servant of the Lord. Even if he smiles with you, watch your familiarity boundaries because you're dealing with anointing and you're dealing with rebuke and you're dealing with representation. Be careful. It is the responsibility of the shepherd to be caring and kind and gentle. But you must not take the shepherd's gentleness as an invitation to familiarity. Lest you dishonor the anointing and refuse the rebuke. It's quiet in here, Bishop. It looks like I need to go. It's quiet in here. You see, if you have never been saved, Return to God. And if you are a backslider, return to God. By backslider, I do not only mean those who have fallen into sin and have left the fellowship of the church, but also those who have reneged on the commitments they have made to Christ when first they started to walk with him. This is a problem for the church. One of the great, one of my leaders, Brother Guy Notice, said to me one day, I was talking to him, and he said to me, he says, son, one of the great challenge and setback of the church is lapse of memory. We forget what God has done. We forget the promises we have made to God because we have become familiar with his house. Oh God, man, I don't have time to finish this. We have forgotten the promises. Oh Lord God, I beg you to recall the promises you have made to God and go back to fulfill them. For every promise you have made to God from the day you got saved, he has not forgotten. And he has dispatched grace and blessing based upon those promises. And many times we have consumed ill-gotten blessing which has not turned out to develop us because we have made promises and God dispatched blessing on the promises and we reneged on our promises but God is not unfaithful to renege on his blessing. All right. Question is, since you got saved and made promises to God, why have you changed your mind about the things you said you were going to do? Because the pro the promises that were made, here's what God did, son. If you make a promise to God, he dispatched gifts in your life to fulfill that promise. And sometimes the promises, the gifts that are dispatched make us feel so important. <laughs> that we walk away from the local church which seems not to have the ability to promote our popularity. You know I'm not good for the church, I'm going to finish. And so we, we use the gifts that were dispatched as, uh, on our promises to go into secular life and world so that we can be 
flaunted, promoted, and pushed, not knowing we are going to a cliff where we're going to fall off and don't get back. I say to you, come back to God. Bring back the man's gift. Give it to him. Bring back his anointing and give it to him so he can use it to enhance the kingdom of God. Um, as if to repeat himself to emphasize urgency and importance he once again declared that God through Christ made himself sin for us who of himself knew no sin Isaiah puts it this way and I promise you I'm coming to an end I'm still working with Liz Taylor Isaiah puts it this way in Isaiah 53 6 we all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. You know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. <laughs> so if you're a part of the church, you must know what the church believes, stands for. You must know the pastor's vision and heart and connect to it. If you don't connect to it, you have made the chain weak. Um... I'm not good for the church, guys. Sometimes some devils who comes into the church did not sneak in. We brought them in. For we have some rebellious, devilish spirits. God, I'm not good for the church. I promise you I won't come back. Rebellious, devilish spirit that nothing can control. There's nothing more frustrating to the Christian body than a person who makes themselves so important they cannot be controlled and then make disciples of themselves to frustrate the anointing and the vision we charge you by God's stead we charge you in the name of the Lord change your way and come back to God bring back the man's anointing and put his gift to use for the kingdom Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 2, 24, 25. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. For you were as sheep going astray but we are now returned to the, unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. All this is so that we might just become righteous. All of this. But he made the righteousness of God in him. So that having returned, we will have the right to become what he is in God. And once again be made the children of God. Matthew Poole puts it this way. He says that as Christ was not made sin by any sin inherited in him. So neither are we made righteous by God by any righteousness inherited in us. But by the righteousness of Christ imputed are brought upon us because he was made a sinner by taking on the sins of his people. Now then, brethren. Now then. Now then, brethren. Now then, people of God. I declare unto you that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are an assignment as though God did beg us we pray you in Christ's stead. We beseech you, we beg you, implore you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. Accept his hand of friendship and stop fighting against his goodwill. Come back to God and enjoy his friendship and hope of glory. Here's something I want to say to you and I'm about done. I want to pray for some people today who did not realize it. But you're finding out that the promises you made to God, you have changed your mind. Not intentionally so. But the enemy tricked you with some other distraction. And the things you were committed to, you're no longer committed to that. I want to pray with you today. And I promise not to embarrass you. Would you get up and come to me now? I want to pray with you. If you realize that there are some things you were passionate about, you're no longer that passionate. There's nothing to be ashamed about. You're an ambassador for Christ and your assignment is waiting. Is there one person? Say, preacher, 
you just ministered to my heart with that. I want you to pray with me. I'm going to get out of your way soon. Is there one person? Uh, now, somebody can hold the baby for you because I know you're smiling at me and I know God is touching your heart. Somebody can hold the baby for you and come. Anybody else? And I'm serious. I'm serious. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless you, man. God bless you. I know somebody can hold the baby for you and come. Come. How long ago since you have made the commitment to Christ that this is what he can count on you for? When you started, how was it going? And what happened? Why it is no longer so? I want you to look yourself upside down and know that some people count you for nothing. But as far as you are concerned, you're an ambassador for Christ. Is there anybody else? We are going to make a change today. Is there anybody in this room who know that you have reneged on God? Is there anybody in that room? Because the kingdom assignment awaits and souls are dying in the process. Is there anybody? This room, that room, any room. I promise not to embarrass you. I really do. I really do. I really do. I really do. Stand with me, please. Is there anybody else? I wonder if there's a person here today not saved. You came to church today because you love the Lord. You have not had the courage to make the commitment to come to Jesus. I promise not to embarrass you. And yes, people will see you. But like all of us, people saw us when we came to the Lord. And Jesus made a difference. Is there one person here not saved today? He said, preacher, would you pray for me? Is there one? Even one. I promise not to embarrass you. Won't you stand with me, please? Won't you please, please stand across this place? Won't you stand with me? Won't you stand with me? You came for the self-same thing. And I'm going to ask you to join hands with each other. In support of the same struggle, the same battle, the same challenge. The gift still remains. The gift still remains. You have a great pastor and wife who will do everything in their power to help you to rekindle that gift so that the kingdom will benefit from your existence. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We come to you. We bless you. We honor you. And I pray today that you would hear the heart of your children who have listened to your word and who are convicted by what they were taught so that it becomes their hope. Their hope. their hope their hope it becomes their hope to return to get back 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 God we, re we rebuke shame we rebuke anything which discourages them we rebuke any word they will hear that will break their spirit we just rebuke anything which comes along the line of their discouragement and today we claim them back. We claim back not just them but their gifts. We now declare that the kingdom is rich. The kingdom is rich. The kingdom is rich because the gifts that were stolen have been uh, is not coming back home. God, we ask that you would use this gift not just to move this church to the next level but God, you would use this gift to impress upon the world the gifts and blessings of the kingdom. God, in Jesus' name, touch your children. Touch your children. Touch your children. Touch your children. Oh God, bring them back. Bring them back. 
Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. In the name of Jesus. 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 Would you raise your hand with me and thank God in the house? The reconciling God. If you believe that God has helped you today and really bring your heart and spirit to a place of reconciliation, won't you just clap your hands? Just clap your hands. Give God praise today. Give God praise. You may be seated if you can. God bless your heart. I want to do one more thing, Bishop. I need your permission, and I know it's going to. I know you, but I got to be me. I am from a country which permits me to do these things. So, for, but I want to. I've, I've, I've never traveled, especially first time, go to a pastor's church and never do this. Never done that. And I know some folk will feel, and some pastors will feel bashful, but that's me. I believe that one thing we have neglected in the house of the Lord is the honor of the servant. I believe that. The one thing we have seriously neglected in the house of the Lord is the honor of the servant. And we have taken for granted many times the gift of the servant without honoring the servant. And that is something that I believe God has blessed my heart to travel the world and challenge because it's an enemy trait. So before I put this microphone down, to, phone down today, it's never about need. It's about releasing. I want you and me who are here today to be a blessing to this servant. That I want to bless him before I leave here. And I want all of you who can. I'm going to get in my wallet. They didn't ask me for that. And he's going to chastise me when I get home. But that's fine. I still have my, my, my room. Can't take me out. His wife will keep me. But I just want you today. And I'm dead serious. Uh, Brother Michael, they know that, that when I try, this is what God has blessed me to do. To encourage preachers and pastors by telling their people, you have a right and a responsibility to encourage your pastor. Bring me that bucket. I wish you had a drum. I just wish you had a barrel from the United States that we throw things in. I want everybody to get your gift out and every dime of this. Keep it in your heart and say, I'm going to bless my pastor today. Won't you get up and come? Uh, 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 run me a bass line or something. Waiting on you. Come now, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's your pastor, your pastor, your pastor and wife you're encouraging today. I want to encourage this man. How many believe he, he's, he's, he deserves to be encouraged? How many believe that? What a great pastor you have. He never asked me, to, I just want to do this. I just want to do this. I want to bless him. I want to be a blessing to him. Amen. I thought my baseline was running. No. I have come yeah, to give back to you. Come on, keep coming. Let's, let's release your own life by blessing the servant. I have release come your own to life say thank by blessing you, the servant. Lord. Release. I have come to give back to you.
Amen. You could you can have your seat for a while. Thank you, thank you so much, my friend and soul brother. Tremendous ministry here this morning. You know, humorously, you know when you skipped? I was wondering, um, when would I see the move? He had a kind of move way back then. That's 40 years of mellowing, mellowing, growing, and maturity. Deep, my brother, tremendous. To God be the glory. And uh, from us here at Glad Tidings Tabernacle, we bless you. We, tomorrow you would leave, and we pray that God will continue the great work that you are doing in the United States and around the world. May God provide for you and open doors for you. Um, let me just say to the, to the Craig family, know that all the sisters are here. Could we have the sisters of we laid to rest Denny's yesterday and uh, the other sisters. You know, we, we continue to pray for you guys. You've been our prayers. You've been our prayers for a good long time as we support you in this very difficult time that you are going through. But God is God is good and God is able. Amen. All right, so we will now have our secretary, Sister Avet, to do the announcements. Morning, church. Please listen to the announcement. Pawi SGG District presents Diamond Evangelistic Trust 2024. Beginning this afternoon, a gospel caravan will be held around the community along with a track distribution. This will begin at 4 p.m. All are asked to assemble at Randy's Wholesale. Please note that there will be no outdoor Sunday school in Belay this afternoon. Tomorrow, the Boys Club will meet at the Dafty Community Center at 4.30 p.m. Mission S Girls Group will also meet tomorrow at the Gomez Methodist School Grounds at 4.30 p.m. Please note that on Wednesday there will be no school of prayer and Christian enrichment. And this is in preparation for our fun day, which will be held on March Thursday, March 14. This will be held to launch our departments on National Heroes Day. This will be held at the Daphne Community Center Grounds and will commence at 10 a.m. Bring along the entire family and invite your friends to join us for a time of fun, food, and fellowship. Wash your foot and come. Continue with Diamond Evangelistic Trust. We, we are invited to join them on Saturday, March 16, for Children's Crusade and Games at Oti's Warehouse at Diamond from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And on Sunday, March 17 to Tuesday, March 19, There'll be three nights of open air meetings at Randy's Wholesale at Diamond from 7 p.m. The speakers will be Reverend Carlton Edwards, Minister Austin, and Reverend Brian Denny. All are invited. Remember to give your names to Deacon Leon Chandler if you need transportation. Our district convocation will be held on Sunday, March 24, 2024, under the theme, Expanding Through the Cycle. Worship, maturing through, sorry, expanding through evangelism, maturing through discipleship. This will be held at the Victoria Park, commencing at 9 a.m. The speaker will be Reverend Ricardo Joseph, Powis Executive Director for World Missions. An, ex an exhibition will be held in the afternoon at 2 p.m. And members here at Glad Tidings with businesses who want to be a part of the exhibition 
you have to see Deacon Lancer Constance for registration forms. Each stall will attract a fee of $25. Powie, uh, Christian Education Easter Extravaganza 2024 will be held on April 1st. This will be held at the South River Spain Field from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be comp competitive races, fun, and fellowship. All invited and encouraged to rep in their color. Glad tidings will wear green. Members, you are asked to indicate your interests so that transportation can be arranged. You are also asked to bring along a tent if you have one. Please be reminded to bring along your special offering to go towards 2020 vision next Sunday. These are all the announcements and the report is on the nurses board. Okay, thank you so much. And let's, let's bear in mind particularly the announcements for this week. And our big event is going to be on Thursday. Thursday is a public holiday. Um, it's our National Heroes Day. And we are going to be at the Daphne Plain, well, the center, the playground. And what we are saying, just wash your foot and come. You, you know that mean in Vinci Land? Just wash your foot. There's no requirement. You don't have to cook food. You don't have to bring a basket. Just wash your foot. Just wash your foot and come. Spread the word around. So remember, remember the flyer. We are going to be sending the flyer this evening at 3 p.m., we're going to bombard everybody with the flyer, 3 p.m. Everybody must send the flyer to all your contacts. WhatsApp, Facebook. The last time I said the other media and the young people laughed at me and said it doesn't work like that. So I will just stay with Facebook and WhatsApp. All right? 3 p.m. Send it to your long list of contacts so that they will know, here, we meet in Daphne, and you need to be there. You're going to be there. You invite a friend there. Uh, last year, we had a wow. Last year was a wow. This year, going to be a wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so join me in standing at this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Clive Porter, for being with us and for so ministering the word of God with such clarity and, uh, and passion. And uh, Pastor Ori, um, wife and in-laws for being with us and all our friends. Um, we have some visitors here that I don't know the names, but thank you so much for being here today. Our online family, thank you again for being with us. We are going to be here again next week, Sunday at 9.30, so please join us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Amen. Amen.